Cupra Tour is the very first car of Seat's new performance brand Cupra, which they built and developed on their own. It is a so-called crossover SUV and of course it looks very, very sporty. Yes, it is a Cupra. But how it drives, what about the powertrain, the space, the comfort and of course the driver assistance and safety systems? Let's find out now. The Formentor features loads and loads of driver assistance and safety systems. Um, here you're going to find a list of what is always on board. And um, to give you some examples, for instance, the car features an adaptive cruise control, uh, an active lane assist, a rear view camera, and so on and so on. And I think you can only order two optional extras regarding to the assistance systems. The Formentor is 1,84 meter in width. And as I think, when you look at the front of the car, it really looks very solidly on the road. One reason for that is this quite flat and very long hood with this power dome. So another thing, of course, is this massive glossy black grille with the Cupra logo and the very thin, narrow and very sharp signed headlamps at both sides of this grille. By the way, these headlamps, they always come as standard in full LED. Another important thing for the look at the face of the car is the front bumper with these aero elements, which not only look nice, they also make the car drive even better. And then you find this um, air intakes here at the side. They put the pressure at the front to the side of the car, make the car look re really solidly on the road. And on the other hand, they're important because they are the air intakes to cool your brakes. The Cupra Formentor costs from 43,950 euro onwards. And that's not cheap money, but the car not only comes very well equipped regarding to power, it also comes very well equipped regarding to everything it has on board. Here you find a list what is on board and only the highlights will be in that list. But I give you some examples. You will find the bucket seats. You will find the sports steering wheel. You will have the digital cockpit, 12 inch touchscreen. You will have um, the ambient light. Um, you will have a heated steering wheel and so on and so on and so on. And I think, of course, you can put some stuff on top. Um, for instance, if you want a uh, leather interior, that costs you about 1,500 euro. If you want the big sunroof, that's about 1,300. And there are some minor bits and pieces, but that really is it. 44,000 euros doesn't sound like little money, but if you look what you have to pay for compact SUVs from other manufacturers with similar performance, the amount sounds more interesting. The new Volkswagen Tiguan R with its 320 horsepower should start at just under 60,000 euros. And the 306 horsepower BMW X2 M35i is available from around 54,000 euros, but with plenty of room for extras. The Formentor always comes with 19 inch alloy wheels, but our car is featuring the dual color version with black and copper. And that one costs you in Germany about 300 euros extra. Um, when you look at the car overall, it's 4 meters 45 in length, and that's a little bit less than a Cupra Arteca, but it's only 1 meter 51 in height, and that's about 10 centimeters less than the Cupra Arteca, and that really gives the car a lot more sporty proportions. Um, when we look and talk about the design of the car, we do have nothing very important here at the front part, but at the rear, you see this really massive um, line over the wheel arch at the rear, and you do see the window graphic from the bottom, it goes up here, and the roof line drops here and that gives the car a push to the front and makes the car look even more sporty. Uh, by the way, a detail which I really like a lot are these rear view mirrors. Uh, not only that they are grey and, and um, shiny, they also have this indicator which I really do like a lot. I've never seen anything like it before in a different car. And then to give the car a bit of this rough look of an SUV, you find this glossy black roof rails. You do of course find these wheel arch claddings and the claddings at the side of the car. Just to remind you, this is a crossover SUV. Inside of the Formentor, the colors black, gray, and copper are dominating. And we talk about the materials. You do find soft touch here at the upper parts on the dashboard as well. If you go a bit lower here at the front of the dashboard, you find something that looks a bit like wood. And then you have glossy gray here or glossy black here around the um, infotainment. And then, of course, you do find copper everywhere. So it's here at the air outtakes. Uh, which are very nicely three-dimensional. You will, of course, find loads of it at the steering wheel, for instance, the, the Cupra logo. We have these extra instruments down here with the circles. Uh, we have the small bars here. And, of course, you do find copper stitching everywhere inside of that car. Even a tall person like me is sitting very comfortably in the front seats of the Formentor. They come as standard as bucket seats with integrated headrests. And I can tell you they offer loads and loads of support and they are still comfortable. When we talk about space, I can tell you I sit perfectly here. I have loads of space 
above me. I can adjust the steering wheel the way I want and I can really say this is a comfortable place to sit in even for a long while. And how about the space behind me? We're going to find out while having a short stop. So that is my short stop to see if I can sit behind me in the Cupra Formentor. The car features a wheelbase of 2 meter 68, so that should be sufficient. Let's see. So getting in is quite easy. And as you see, I do have space in front of my knees. I do have about that amount of space above my hat. And I think for a compact SUV, that's more than sufficient. If you're looking for standard round instruments inside of the Formentor, you will not find any. And the same is if you're looking for buttons and knobs. That car is featuring a standard 10.25-inch full digital cockpit. And this not only provides you with different view types, like the Formentor type with a big RAF meter in the middle, it also provides you with the opportunity to adjust it the way you want. So you can, the side left and right, adjust um, with different information, like uh, I have the G meter on the right hand side and left hand side have the power information, but I can also choose stuff like um, actual consumption, consumption over all range and all that stuff. So it's completely uh, something that completely can individualize the way you want. Um, when we talk about the infotainment, that comes as standard with a 12 inch touchscreen. And this really is the, yeah, the center control of the whole Cupra. You can work here um, with your climate control, you can work with your sat-nav and all the other stuff. And the important thing is you can configure it the way you want. So you may remember we did it with a, say a Leon, so you can uh, choose how your home screen should look like. You will of course find live data, like um, traffic informations, like information about petrol prices and all that stuff. When we talk about buttons and knobs, as said, nothing in the car. Uh, below the infotainment, you do find slider and touch sensors. And when you look at the light panel left under the steering, this is similar to the one that we already know from the Volkswagen Golf, which is also only sensors. At the rear of our Cupra Formentor, you can really see how sporty that car is. One good example are these massive shoulders, which really puts the car very solidly on the road. Then you do find this massive rooftop spoiler and this very narrow black uh, window at the rear of the car. The Formentor always comes with LED taillights and with this light bend between the two taillights. And that is the reason why the car looks even wider than it is in reality. On top of this, you do find the Cupra logo and the signature of Cupra to tell the guys you just overtake what car did this to them. And to make the car even more sporty, we have this glossy black diffuser here at the rear of the car and four massive pipes. There's one real highlight inside of the car, which is the sport steering wheel. And this not only features the buttons and knobs we already know from the new Seat Leon, it also features two extra buttons down here. One is to start and stop the engine, which is quite nice because normally that's in the center console. And the other one is the Cupra button. And with this one, you can switch the drive profiles from comfort to sport or to individual. But if you press the button longer, you instantly jump into the Cupra mode and then the car really is a beast. If you want to connect your mobile device inside of the car, there are two USB-C sockets in the front and two at the rear. But if you don't want to use any cables, you can buy for 220 euros the so-called connectivity box, which, which provides you with wireless charging. And if you put another 200 on top, you will get Apple CarPlay Wireless and Android Auto as well. There will be nine different powertrains available for the Cupra Formentor, and that will be diesel as well as petrol, as well as hybrid or plug-in hybrids. And I do not have the numbers of all of them already, but there will be a plug-in hybrid with a combination out of 150 horsepower petrol engine combined with a 85 kilowatt um, electric motor. And then there will be an entrance model, which will have 150 horsepower out of a four cylinder uh, petrol engine. And I think this is, will be the 1.5 liter you may already know from other Volkswagen models. And on top of this, there is the car we're driving, which is the top version, 310 horsepower, 400 newton meters of maximum torque out of a four cylinder, two liter turbo petrol engine. And that gives the car some nice figures like top speed limited at 250 kilometers per hour and the acceleration zero to 100 kilometers per hour in only 4.9 seconds. Talking about practicability, the Formentor offers standard compartments in the doors at the front, a driver and passenger, passenger side as well. And then you do find the center console because we do now have a shift by wire system, no longer a big gear shift knob. So that means we do find a, a slightly bigger compartment to the right of the uh, shift by wire system and a smaller one 
uh, at the left hand side and then you do find two cup holders here and an adjustable armrest and at the very front you do find two USB-C ports and there's another two there are another two at the rear um, of this uh, center console and you do find a um, quite large compartment which also is the place where you can put the optional wireless charging for your mobile devices. The Cupra Formentor offers a maximum boot size of 450 liters but that's not for our car because this is the four-wheel drive version. This is the figure for the front-wheel powered cars. Our car with a 320 horsepower petrol engine only offers 420 liters of maximum boot capacity. And then there is the plug-in hybrid, which will arrive a bit later. That then only offers 345 because the battery must be placed somewhere. Um, while we're standing here at the rear of the car, just some figures regarding, regarding towing. So if you want to tow something with the car, you can of course have the, um, the towing hook. That costs you about 320 euros. And then our car is allowed to tow as a maximum 1.8 tons. With the rear seats folded down, the Cupra Formentor offers a maximum load volume of up to 1,475 liters. The Volkswagen Tiguan R can take about 200 liters more with a maximum of 1,655 liters. A BMW X2 M35i offers up to 1,355 liters and so about 100 liters less than the Cupra. The 2-liter four-cylinder turbo engine inside of the Formentor really makes a great job. It delivers 228 kilowatts or 310 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, and that is uh, combined with a seven speed DSG gearbox and pushes the power to all four wheels. And with that, you can really have great fun driving the car sporty, do cornering, and but on the other hand, you can also drive the car quite easy and just enjoy the countryside. Uh, and by the way, that provides the car with quite some nice numbers because the top speed is uh, reached at 250 kilometers an hour and it accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour, 60 miles per hour in only 4.9 seconds. But if you say that's not enough for me, you may have to wait a bit, bit more because I heard some rumors that there will be a bigger engine which then has five cylinders and I would expect this is the Audi one. We may, you may know it already from the RS3 and that then should offer 400 horsepower. There will be up to nine different powertrains available for the Formentor and to give you an idea which one are the big ones and which ones are the less powerful ones, the big ones will then be um, named Formentor VZ because VZ is the short version of um, Veloz and that's the Spanish word for quick. That was my test drive with the new Cupra Formentor and I have to say I still really like the exterior design and when you look inside of the car it's an absolute beauty, I think. You find glossy black, glossy gray, leather, soft touch, and all that copper. So it really looks as a Cupra should look like. And then bucket seats are standard, 12 inch touchscreen, loads of driver assist and safety systems, all perfect. And then the drive, 310 horsepower, four wheel drive. And it's a real pleasure because the steering and suspension works perfectly in the car. So I really don't have to say anything negative about it. And when you look at the pricing, less than 44,000 euros for the base model, which is fully equipped, and that's even less than the Cupra Arteca costs. Volkswagen Tiguan is in the market since 2007, and it's a real success for the brand. In 2019 alone, Volkswagen sold more than 900,000 units of that car, and so it's even more successful than the Volkswagen Golf. Now they present the new facelift of the car, and for the very first time, a Volkswagen R model as well. And this is the car we're going to have a closer look today. The heart of our Tiguan R is a new 2-liter 4-cylinder turbo petrol engine and that delivers 235 uh, kilowatts or 320 horsepower and a maximum of 420 newton meters of torque and it's combined in that car with a 7-speed DSG gearbox and that powers all the four wheels and so that gives you some nice driving figures. For instance, the car is limited at 250 kilometers per hour top speed and um, Unfortunately, Volkswagen didn't deliver any official consumption data, but I would say if you want to be on the safe side, calculate something between 8 up to 10 liters per 100 kilometer driven. With 1 meter 86 in width, the Tiguan is as wide as its predecessor, but there are still some changes uh, with the facelift that so we are going to have to talk about. For instance, when you look at the hood, it's a bit more upright here at the front and it's a bit higher than with the predecessor and even and that shape here also has changed slightly and together with the grille the car now looks from the front a little bit more like its bigger brother Turek 
and important to know is the Tiguan now always comes with LED headlamps, but our car features the optional Matrix LED IQ light system, which means we talk about 24 single LEDs per headlamp. And when you look at the front of the car, it's the Tiguan R, which should look very sporty. And so you do find a big air intake down here, which I do like a lot. But when you look at the side, like here, I think this is a touch too much for a compact SUV. Part of our interior trim level with the R is we do not only have the uh, Digital Cockpit Pro and the R um, Sports steering wheel, we also have, I think, most important, this special sports seat with an integrated headrest. Because they do not offer loads and loads of comfort, they also offer more than enough support. And I can tell you, the headrest is, even for a person like me, absolutely fine. The new Tiguan is available with a 130 horsepower petrol engine from around 28,200 euros in Germany. The next equipment level life costs just under 1,800 euros more, but offers, for instance, the AirCare Climatronic and the Automatic Distance Control ACC. In addition, Volkswagen also offers the version Elegance from 36,856 and the R-Line from 39,230 euros. No prices have yet been communicated for the new 320 horsepower top variant Tiguan R. However, an amount under 60,000 euros is expected. Looking at the side of our test car, you instantly recognize this 21-inch alloys here. Important to know is the 21-inch are only an optional extra for the Tiguan R. If you talk about the normal Tiguan, that starts with 17-inch and you can order up to 20. And then, of course, at the side, nothing really has changed. The only thing is if you find now this R batch here to know what car you're driving, uh, we have, because of the R version, this um, caps here on the rear view mirrors, which looks a bit like alloy, and the same look is up here and to give the car a bit more of a sporty look at the side we have this side sails here which yeah looks a bit more dynamic a bit more aggressive but overall the car is four meters 51 in length which means it's a little bit longer than its predecessor and that's only because of the new front and rear bumper but to be really honest the side is actually the same as with the predecessor the Tiguan always comes with lane assist as well as with an emergency brake assist, including pedestrian recognition. But on top of this, you can, of course, configure loads and loads of extra driver assist and safety systems. Um, and the list you see now is just to give you some examples of it. But on top of this, I think the most important one is the new so-called travel assist, because with that system, you can up to 210 kilometers per hour drive nearly autonomously with your Tiguan. Talking about practicability, of course, the Tiguan delivers loads and loads of compartments. So you do find nicely uh, sized ones in the doors here at the front. You do find an extra one uh, left under the uh, steering wheel. And of course, you have the center console where you do have two cup holders, uh, adjustable armrest with another compartment beneath and a big one here at the front, which also provides you with wireless charging and very important, um, the Tiguan now offers wireless Apple CarPlay as well. Looking on the rear seats, you do find, um, of course, compartments in the doors and two extra cup holders in the armrest as well. With 1m67 or as a Formotion version 1m68 in height, the Tiguan is as high as its predecessor. But there are some new things we're going to find at the rear. So start with the light. The Tiguan features always LED taillights, but we do have the so-called IQ light on board, which means you do find this new signature here, which switches to here when you brake. And you may remember we, know, we saw that first time at the Volkswagen Passat, and that should yeah, attract people's eyes more to let them know you're braking. Um, another new thing is we have this R sign here. Normally, that would be Tiguan. And I think this, together with the new Volkswagen logo, makes the rear of the car a bit more modern. Um, to give our version, the R, a bit more sportiness, we do not only find this big roof spoiler here, we also find this glossy black diffuser. And important to know is the Tiguan R always comes with a four-pipe um, exhaust system as standard, but ours is featuring the optional Akrapovich version, which makes the car even more sporty. One thing which is really new with the Tiguan and of course with all the new Volkswagen models is you will not find any knobs and buttons anymore in the car. So when you look here at the steering wheel, you do not find anything. You have touch sensors all the time, but you have some where you can slide and some where you can push. Um, you do have the same here with the center screen, which is, by the way, between 6.5 up to 9.2 inch 
big and it's always a touch screen but you do not find any buttons here and it's the same with the climate control uh, you can swipe if you want but you can press as well both is working fine but it's something you really have to get used to but i think the most important thing is the r button on top of our steering wheel because that will be the most pressed button for all the r drivers and if you push that one that car really tells you what it can deliver by the way, this sound not only comes from this beautiful two-liter turbo engine, it also comes from our optional Akrapovich exhaust system. There's a variety of different engines available for the new Tiguan. For instance, the diesel, all two-liter four-cylinder engines, and they deliver a power range between 122 up to 200 horsepower. There are two petrols available, both 1.5 liter, either 130 or 150 horsepower. Then there is a new one, it's called e-hybrid, which is nothing different than a plug-in hybrid. And there we talk about a system output of up to 245 horsepower. Very important here is that car is a combination out of a 1.4 liter petrol engine with a 85 kilowatt electric motor. And then there is the car we're driving, the Tiguan R, and that features a two liter turbo petrol engine. And the output here is 320 horsepower, 450 newton meters of maximum torque, and it's powered to all four wheels. A very important feature here with the Tiguan R is the new torque vectoring system, because that not only delivers um, the power to the front and the rear axle as needed, it also delivers or distributes the power between the right and the left um, rear wheel. And that gives you a lot more uh, a lot easier cornering, which means when you drive, for instance, a left corner quick, the car will push more power to the right rear wheel, and so it really pushes you into that corner. What I really do like a lot are these new gear shift paddles here at the steering wheel, because these are not these small, tiny things from the old Tiguan. They really tell you, yes, here we talk about sport. With the boot, nothing really has changed. The Tiguan now offers 615 liters of maximum boot capacity with the rear seats up. If you fold the bench down, that increases to 1,655. What I really do like with it is this part here because that's completely soft and easy. And this is because of this underfloor compartment here. You can access it like this, or you can just put that one down here, and then you have the maximum boot capacity. And by the way, the car can tow trailers up to a weight of 2.5 tons now. The clear competitor of the new Tiguan R is the group brother Cupra Ateca. With a starting price of around 44,000 euros, it is much cheaper than the Tiguan R, but it also only offers a maximum of 300 horsepower. In the segment of the sporty compact SUVs, you also find the Jaguar E-Pace P300. It offers 300 horsepower, but costs at least just under 53,000 euros. The 306 horsepower strong Mercedes AMG GLA 35 formatic is similarly expensive. The space the car offers here at the front really is absolutely nice. So even me, I'm nearly two meters tall, I do sit absolutely, yeah, easy inside of the car. You sit a bit more high and a bit more upright, but this is typical for an SUV. And I can tell you, even for my front passenger, it will be absolutely fine. How about the space behind me? And if I can sit behind myself, we're gonna try while having a short stop. So, a short stop to see if I can sit behind me. I didn't change my position, and so, see, the door opens quite, yeah, good, and the entrance is a bit higher because we talk about an SUV, but let's see. So, entering is easy, and I do have about five centimeters head space left, and in front of my knees, there's space as well, and to be honest, this is the standard Tiguan. The all space will follow later, so this is already very nice. The materials and craftsmanship of the Tiguan are typical Volkswagen. So you do find soft touch at the upper parts and you do find plastic at the lower parts. But when we talk about the R version we're driving, it's a bit, yeah, a higher class of, of uh, luxury, we'll say. Because we have these beautiful seats with its different colors, we do have this um, Alcantara here at the doors. And of course, we do find some glossy stuff at the steering wheel as well as at the center console. But as you know, you need to have a towel or cloth to clean them from time to time. An optional feature of the Tiguan is a head-up display, but unfortunately it's not a real one because this is the one where just a screen pops out of your uh, dashboard here and it does not uh, project the information to the front uh, window. So for me that's a feature which I would not order. That was my test drive in the brand new Volkswagen Tiguan and what I really like is that car represents what its predecessor did already. So we do find loads and loads of space, nice materials, good craftsmanship and everything you expect from a modern compact SUV. 
but the car is of course a bit more modern so we do find new driver assist and safety systems a completely new touch control system a new steering wheel and of course a new infotainment and when we talk about modernization look at the exterior it's not so much what they did but that changes the look and makes it even more fresh and more modern but when i look at the front of our r model i'm not a big fan of this super sportiness here i think that's a bit a touch too much for a standard compact suv but i think on the other hand really good news is the price because that car is in germany about 2000 euros cheaper than its predecessor